Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today I'm going to teach you how to make bureki. This is not any ordinary bureki, this is the bureki from Kanya that my Tia Costula makes, my aunt who I love so much, my dad's sister. I recorded her making this while I was there a few weeks ago because she makes this the best and I am going to teach you how she made it. If you follow me on Instagram, and if you don't, you should. But whoever does followed me along on Greece and I shared a lot of my daily activities on there. And when I would share this recipe or pictures of it, I got so many messages for, uh, from you guys wanting this recipe. So I'm bringing it to you today. Bureki is basically a zucchini and potato gratin that is full of delicious Greek cheeses like feta, kefalotiri. If you wait around until the end, you're going to see clips of my aunt cooking and me with her there in Greece from this past summer. So make sure you stay until the end so you could watch those. Let's go over the ingredients so we can start. So in this container over here that I bought from Greece, isn't it so cute? It's made out of olive wood and it is a cheese grater. I could not resist. Anyway, I grated some kefalotiri cheese. You can use Parmesan. As long as you grate it or shred it, you'll be fine. Some salt and black pepper. And then I slice them into very thin slices, about a quarter inch thick, and um, I sprinkle salt over them. You want to make sure that you leave them in a colander for an hour so that way they can drain. You're going to see after an hour a lot of liquid is released and you want that to come out and to strain so that way it's not going to water down your, your casserole. And then over here I have some potatoes that I've sliced into thin slices, also a quarter inch in thickness. And I use this mandolin. I love this brand. I'm going to put the link in the description box down below as well as on my website. I love it because it's very safe to use because of this little food gripper that's on there. It, once you put the food in there, you pop this down and it holds it in place. And make sure when you get down to the bottom, you just stop. Even if you waste a little bit of the zucchini and you just cut it with a knife, it'll be better than uh, slicing the plastic off of this or your finger but I will post a link for this because it is very helpful and I put it on the three millimeter setting. And over here I have some fresh parsley that I'm gonna chop up, fresh mint, a little bit of all-purpose flour, feta cheese, dried oregano, this is full fat whole milk ricotta cheese, this is a small onion that I've chopped up very finely, some heavy whipping cream, and some olive oil. So I just wanted to let you know that if you do not own a mandolin, you don't have to go out and buy one. It is a great gadget to have because it slices through the zucchini and the potato very quickly. If you're going to use it, be very careful. Do not try to save that little tip of the zucchini or the potato because you will slice your finger. Make sure to use a little the food grip holder that it comes with. If you don't have one and you don't care about buying one because you don't have any room for it or whatever the reason is, you can just finally slice the vegetables with your knife. No problem, get them as thin as possible so that way they all bake evenly. Let's begin making this delicious dish. So just make sure to strain the water out of the potatoes and then just pat them dry with a paper towel. Then we're gonna drizzle some olive oil on top and we're gonna season them with salt. Potatoes need a lot of salt, so don't be shy to season them well. That's where all the flavor comes from. Then some freshly ground black pepper, as much as you like, and some dried oregano. Give it a nice mix and set aside. And pat the zucchini down. Pat it dry with a paper towel to get whatever water is on there off. Now my aunt likes to do this to her zucchini, salt it and drain it overnight. So if you're that organized, you can go ahead and do this the night before and all of the liquid will come out of the zucchini and it'll just cook perfectly. But an hour works just fine. And we're going to do the same thing with the zucchini. We're going to season it. A little bit of olive oil, just a little bit of salt because it's already been salted, black pepper and dried oregano. Give it a mix and that's done. Now I'm going to crumble in the feta cheese into my ricotta mixture. Mix everything all up together. Now this is my um, substitute for mizithra cheese. Mizithra cheese is a tangy cheese that's made in Crete that is just delicious. And if you can find it, use that instead of this. But since I can't ever find it, this is my go-to substitute. I'm gonna set this aside. Now I'm just gonna chop up all of my herbs. Now the herbs give this dish so much flavor, so you wanna use fresh herbs. Now, if you watched my How to Preserve Your Herbs video, um, it, you can definitely use your frozen herbs if you have them in the freezer already chopped up. 
the same amount of mint and parsley will do. It's about a third of a cup of chopped up mint and about a cup of fresh parsley. The frozen works just fine in this recipe. You just want to make sure to very finely chop it. Add it on top of the sliced, the chopped up onions, and I'm just going to chop up the parsley next. And go ahead and just mix the herbs with the onion. And I'm just going to push this to the side. I'm using a 10 by 10 inch square baking pan because I, I love the way it comes out in this. You can use a round if that's what you have, a round baking pan. And start by drizzling about two to three tablespoons of olive oil to the bottom. And then take half of the zucchini slices and arrange them as the first layer in the bottom of the baking pan. Take half of the onion and herb mixture and sprinkle it on top of your zucchini layer. Then take a quarter of your cheese mixture and put it in your hand and you're just going to dollop it on top. Small dollops all over the top of the zucchini slices and the onion herbs. And then just sprinkle the top, just dust the top lightly with all-purpose flour. This will take care of any excess moisture that the zucchini and the onions are going to release. Then make a layer with half of the potato slices. Then we're going to sprinkle a third of the Parmesan cheese on top. And we're going to pour half of the heavy whipping cream on top of that. And we're going to continue doing the same thing with the final layer of zucchini. We're going to do zucchini, onion mixture, the cheeses, and then the potato slices, finishing with Parmesan cheese on top. This is the final potato layer. I'm going to pour the cream on top of that. It's going to add plenty of richness. I'm going to add the rest of this ricotta cheese and feta mixture. And we're going to finish the top off with a nice coating of this shredded kefalotiri. If you cannot have, if you cannot find kefalotiri, Parmesan is a very good substitute. And then I also like to add a little bit of dried oregano. You want to make sure your oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This is going to go in for 30 minutes uncovered. Then you're going to take the tray out and you're going to take a big piece of parchment paper. Now this is what my aunt likes to do. She takes a piece of parchment paper and she crumbles it. And this is genius because all of these years I used to struggle with putting big parchment paper over a tray that, you know, it doesn't really fit in, it pops up, it's very awkward. But when you crumble parchment paper, it just fits in place and you can wet it a little bit too so that way it stays in place even more. As soon as 30 minutes pass, cover it with the parchment paper, then with aluminum foil, put it back in the oven and let it bake at 350 degrees covered for an hour and a half. It takes a while to cook, but you don't have to do anything. This is all you do. You let it bake and you forget about it. After an hour and a half, remove the covering, the parchment paper and the foil, and let it bake for a final 30 minutes. So that way the top can be nice and golden. The potatoes are going to be fork tender. And I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it comes out. Once it comes out of the oven, make sure to let it sit at room temperature for about 20 or 30 minutes before you go ahead to slice it so everything can settle down and sort of stick together. Then go ahead and take out a slice and enjoy this. This is great because it's hearty enough to be served as a vegetarian main course with a nice side salad, like arugula salad is my go-to salad. You could do a zucchini Greek noodle salad. I have lots and lots of salad recipes on the channel. Take your pick and enjoy it with this. But in Greece, it's also served as a side. And you should keep this in mind because even though fall is technically not here yet, but uh, Thanksgiving is right around the corner. I don't know, it's on my mind. I cannot wait for it. And this is a dish that would be great as a potato side. So anyway, enough talking. Time to bite into this. It smells so good. I don't know, do you hear, the, all, do you hear that singing? <laughs> it tastes so good. The herb combination is just perfect. The onions just are lightly sweetened in the back. You can't even really tell that they're in there. The mint is very prominent and it brightens the whole thing up. It goes so well with the zucchini. The potatoes are perfectly cooked and that ricotta and feta, creamy, tangy, delicious, just the way it should be. I know that you guys are going to love this, so head on over to the website and print the recipe www.demetriusdishes.com. The link is in the description box down below. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I will see you all next time. Yes, us.
One, she's making gluten free because my cousin likes to eat that way, so you can do that too if you want to avoid flour. But that's it, now it just goes in the oven after the final layer of potatoes goes in there. Sarah, it's the bureki. That's my